Hello people. I have another question about the Copernic model. So Copernicus was born in 1473 in Poland and studied among other subjects mathematics and astronomy. He mainly he, he is mainly remembered for formally introducing the idea that the Sun is the center of our solar system. This heliocentric concept, sun-centered concept, was a radical idea for his time. Nearly all contemporary astronomers had ad adopted the Greek Earth-centered model. It was so radical a uh, concept, in fact, that Copernicus waited until the year of his death to publish his famous essay title on the revolutions of the Emily Spears. Yeah, so he waited to die so to publish it. Interesting. Copernicus had two main reasons for asserting that the Sun was the center of our solar system. Number one, while Ptolemaic model was very good at predicting the positions of the planets, it wasn't precise and all over the centuries his predictions got worse and worse. Really? Copernicus didn't like the, the fact that the Ptolemaic model had big epicycles to explain the retrograde motions of the planets. He knew that this could be explained instead of instead by having the Earth also moving around the Sun. Okay. The true motion of the planets around the Sun is not uniform circular motion, so Comer Copernicus model still needed to have epicycles. He had 1500 years of post Ptolemy data to work with. Oh, good and needed quite a lot of epicycles to make a new set of uh, accurate predictions for the motions of the planets. The main simplification of the Copernican model was the retrograde loops of the planets as seen from the Earth occur naturally as a result of the Earth's motion combined with the motions of the planets. Uh, uh, this is not interesting, so let's see the video about it the motion, the retrograde motion, according to Earth's rotation. Okay, so let's look at uh, Pytolemy's model. Claudio Pytolemy lived in Rome around 10, uh, 100 AD. His model of the solar system and every sphere was refined of previous models developed by the Greek astronomers. Pytolemy's major contribution, however, was that his model could so accurately explain the motions of the heavenly bodies. It became the model for understanding the structure of the solar system. It is beyond the scope of his course to discuss, discuss all the, the complex social and historical implications of the Earth-centered versus the Sun-centered model of the solar system. The discussion happening now. But nearly all the early ob models, including Ptolemy's version of the solar system, assumed that the Earth was the center of not only the solar system, but the entire universe. They were smart back then, you know. The Ptolemaic model ac accounted for the apparent motions of the planets in a very direct way by assuming that each planet moves on a small sphere on a circle called ep circle cycle that moved on a larger sphere or circle called a different. The stars it was assumed moved on a celestial sphere around the outer side of the planet spheres. So this is an animation of it. He moves around in a circle in another circle basically. This, could, this is explaining the retrograde movement of the planets. So Pythalamus fame comes partly from what he figured it out by his influence was largely because he wrote a great summary of everything known about astronomy. Pythalamus insti insisted that the job of the astronomer was to explain the motions of the wanderers using only unicircular circular motion. Uniform circular motion, sorry. The kind of motion that most gears and wheels show to make the planets appear to speed up and slow down these three, three, three tricks were used. The epicycles were shown were the first trick. The second trick was to move the observer out of the center of the circle, 
putting us into the eccentric position. The third trick was called the equantum as it illustrated here. So you should change your positions, also you change your perspective. So an indication of exactly how good the Ptolemaic model is, modern planetariums, you know that uh, thing that uh, projects the stars and the planets, are built using gears and motors that essentially reproduce the Ptolemaic model for the appearance of the sky as viewed from a stationary Earth. In the planetary projector, motors and gears provide uniform motion of the heavenly bodies. One motor moves the planet's projector around the, in a big circle, which in this case is different, and another gear of motors take the place of the epicycle. Well, the fact that was base planetary projections that we base planetary projections on a pathetic model of the universe that was developed almost 2000 years ago may seem impressive a better test of the model is how long the model has, accept has accepted by society in this case pathetic model was not seriously challenged for over 1300 1, years when and why it's finally needed to be replaced as I talked first was the Copernic model so why we still use this model on a planetary to show us the planet the movements of the planets and the stars and not recreate a planetary according to the Copernic model why is that why do you use a geocentric model to show us how it works up there and don't create a machine that uh, works this com complicated um, mis mislead to show us the, the stars that's uh, an important question why do you still use Ptolemy's model in the planetarium why so we should keep on asking questions always so see you later people